guys, it's Heli and this is the vlog of the 7 day readathon that I held from 26 July to 1st of August, the HP read with Heli. So many of you joined in and I was so excited. Note that I have vlogged it, like I have vlogged my moments, the moments I liked the most from the book or the moments I wanted to like vlog them on camera and not like every moment that I was reading because uh, that sort of takes away the joy of reading when you feel like you're being watched all the time. So I hope you like what I have to say. There are moments when I look like a mess because obviously being a vlog, um, I shot it without any sort of makeup and there were times when I was not sleeping much. But overall, I hope that you like my vlog. Note that the readathon was sponsored by Storytel, the audiobook platform that I also used during the readathon so that I could read more books. If you want to read audiobooks, if you want to read books on the go, if you travel a lot and you're wasting all the time, if you waste a lot of time in household chores, and anything that you think that leaves your ears free to listen to somebody you should go for audiobooks and for audiobooks the best platform out there is Storytel and if you're ready to try out audiobooks use a 30-day free trial code which is storytel.com slash ali to listen to audiobooks 1 lakh plus audiobooks actually for free for 30 days after that the price is just 2.99 per month which is like the price of only one or two books and for that you can get access to one lakh books i usually try out like 20 books and read about 10 books a month on storytel so yeah that would be it guys let's get into the vlog bye bye hi guys so the harry potter readathon starts today i have started listening to the philosopher's stone on storytel right now i'm i will be cleaning my room and the rains have just begun in kolkata I'm so excited. The weather is amazing to start reading this book. By J.K. Rowling. Read by Stephen Fry. And I'm Guys, now I am on chapter 3 and I'm reading the letters from no one. I finished the first two and a half chapters in the morning while working on Storytel. And right now I'm going to read from this particular book. This is an illustrated version that I've never read. I bought it but it was just in my cupboard for a long time. So I, oh my god. <laughs> I thought that this was a good time to finally, you know, start reading this. I am at that point when Harry just found out that he is a wizard. Hagrid tells him, Harry, you're a wizard. And you know the thrill is the same as the numerous times before that I have read this and I've, I had absolutely forgotten how every time you read Harry Potter you immerse in the magical world and you forget about all your work. I'm about 60% done with Harry Potter and I'm very sleepy today I had a new client on voting and that took up a lot of time otherwise I probably would have finished Philosopher's Stone today itself but 26th August was not that good of a start to my readathon personally but I think I'll be able to finish the remaining 40% by tomorrow and I'm probably going to read to my sleep uh, on Storytel which is my regular schedule and I guess I will be able to finish like 5-10% to 10 of it while I am at it. So yeah, good night. Hi, so it's Saturday and I had a lot of work since morning but today now it's about 12 noon and I'm going to sit to read Harry Potter once again. I last night about 70 pages of it were left so I guess I'll be able to finish it within one or two hours max and after that I can move on to Chambers of Secrets. So guys I just finished reading the first book of Harry Potter and now I'm going to be moving on. By the way it's raining guys I don't think you can see outside but it's, it's raining it looks beautiful and it feels great. And now I'll be starting Chamber of Secrets. Yay! Day 3 and I'm on page 128, the death day party of Chamber of Secrets. I hope to finish this on day 3 because otherwise it's going to be really, really late. Um, also, I just realized that the binding of this book is sort of coming off and that really upsets me. Hi, so I am at about page number 250. T was it? Yes. And it is the chapter Polyjuice Potion. One of my favorite chapters and one of my favorite memories from the movie itself. I hope to finish this book by tonight. I had to go out like I was feeling very bored at home. So I went out to a cafe and have had some food with my mother today. So that took sort of some time. And now I came back home and realized that one of my clients 
want me to edit one of their campaigns once again. So it's quite tiresome, but I, I really want to finish reading Chamber of Secrets today because I want to finish reading at least five books in this readathon. And unless I finish this today, there's no way that I'm going to finish like even four books in the readathon. So I hope that it works out fine. So it's day four of the readathon. I have finished Chamber of Secrets, but today I have a full day of college. So I, I'm ready to leave for college right now, actually. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to start Prisoner of Azkaban today. I will be starting it or as an audiobook for sure, but I don't think I'll be able to pick up the book for the day because I'll be returning home up, up to seven probably, and I'm gonna be really, really tired. Today is day five of the readathon, and I have completed till chapter fifteen. I listened to uh, this audiobook of Prisoner of Azkaban on Storytel today throughout the day during breaks and while I was traveling. But I still have about, I think, five or six chapters to go and it's about 120 pages in the book. So I will be resuming reading in, in the book now. And I'm just feeling so tired, but I know that if I don't finish this book today, I am definitely not going to be able to finish the readathon, at least five books in this readathon, which is like my goal. I know some of you may say, Helly, don't rush, but you know, I love the rush of reading and it's just, it's very subjective, so don't judge me about it. Also, while I was reading this book, uh, there was a scene when Hermione and Ron were having a uh, sort of a fight and then they made up and it was like the cutest thing. I, I don't understand why I hadn't ever noticed that this was probably the very first time I felt that they were meant to be together. Also, like Prisoner of Azkaban is the, the least favorite movie of mine in the whole Harry Potter series. But the book, it seems like it's turning out to be my favorite because I'm loving it so much. So I just finished reading Prisoner of Azkaban and I loved it, especially the ending where Harry tells Uncle Vernon that I have a godfather and he's a murderer. I, I like if any kid tells their uncle that their godfather is a murderer, that's a, sort of amazing. Although like in reality, he's not a murderer. He, it, he's just been framed. Um, if you know the story, you know this already. Otherwise, I'm not sure why you're watching this vlog because obviously there's going to be a lot of spoilers inside this vlog. But um, I think now it's a good time to start with Goblet of Fire. So I have Goblet of Fire here. This is definitely one of the fattest books of the series and I have a sort of a problem in completing fat books. Uh, but I am surely going to finish reading this by tomorrow. By the way, that's Poochie there. Poochie. Poochie. I have no idea what she's doing. It's 12.30 or about 1 p.m. on day 6 of this readathon and I have finished reading Goblet of Fire right now. I honestly was quite, a, quite shocked at how I overlooked a lot of things when I saw the movie or even read a few parts of the book for the first time. But now it's more, it's very clear to me, especially uh, the concept of Dobie as the slave and the masters. You can totally look at it from a colonial or post-colonial point of view. And then there is Rita Skeeter. My God, every time she opens her mouth, I'm like, I want to stuff a, a pillow into her face. I hate her so much. But I'm, I think that it's quite a good way to interpret it if we think of it as a satire on yellow journalism because yeah, it's very very common nowadays and it has been ever since the beginnings of journalism and uh, there are also a lot of things that I really liked about this book is that the themes of love and friendship are tested more than any other book that I've read so far in this series in Goblet of Fire. I also thought that I could go through reading the whole series without crying and boy was I wrong because Cedric's death didn't make me cry but when his parents were not angry at Harry but they just thanked him for you know bringing back his body I could not control myself at that point of time uh, it was it was very sad. Um, uh, if I am to finish reading the seven books of the Readathon, I have to finish Order of the Phoenix today and it's 
really fat. It's the fattest book of the series. So wish me luck. I have about 12 hours to go till midnight and I'll probably be able to finish it if I read really, really fast. Currently, I'm at the chapter Professor Umbridge of Order of the Phoenix and boy, the more I read Harry Potter, the more I feel that if you read this book from, from, from a satirical point of view, it really changes, the meaning really changes and there are so many point of views that you can apply but uh, regarding the ministry interfering with Hogwarts study curriculum, it almost feels like it's a satire on how governments uh, involved with education and schools and, you know, try to trim down the syllabus and something like that. And it, this has been happening since ages. For example, in English literature, we only study like most of our syllabus, more than 90% is about dead white European males. And I have no idea why it's that way. But... Uh, Obviously, I do have an idea because uh, they sort of had the power over the others. But that doesn't still make sense. Like, there's so much literature written by non-white people. There are so many amazing pieces of literature written by women. But they are not given as much importance as the ones by dead white European males. And this is a very common term of criticism in English literature. But this happens in every area of life, in every educational area of life. And uh, the more I read this, Professor Umbridge is more like a symbol, I feel, of this restriction that, you know, authorities try to put on people they have power over. And the more you, you know, delve into Harry Potter, you will, and the more you are aware of literary theories and critical theories like this, you will, you will enjoy it much more. And... Uh, I really want to read Harry Potter from a Marxist point of view sometime. But I guess that will be very, very far-fetched a thought. Anyway, let's get back to reading. So it's almost midnight and I just finished reading Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. God, this, this is probably the fattest book that I've ever read. One of my favorite chapters was definitely the one where you get to know more about Snape. Snape is my favorite character in the Harry Potter series and... Not Harry Potter, actually. So it's it's really my favorite parts in the book where you get to see, you know, the sides of the different shades of Snape. But there's there's this thing I really can't stop feeling. Why why didn't these Hogwarts people just give the defense against dark arts position to Snape? Like this position is so haunted. Everybody who comes for this particular job file they can't do it or they are evil or there's just some sort of problem with this particular person this post is haunted i feel um it, they could have just given this post to snape in the first place i have no idea why they didn't do that but secondly this man this fudge like he's i i shouldn't say bad things about ministers of magic but I think that he's the biggest piece of shit that I've ever, ever come across. Like, he, what is his problem with facing the reality? I think that Cornelius Fudge should have really gone to therapy, but he didn't. It's the last day of the readathon. I'm almost done with uh, Harry Potter and Half-Blood Prince. I haven't slept a lot last night. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm almost done with this. This is page 445. Ginny and Harry have started dating. What a nightmare. Um, I really never ever liked Ginny. Like, I don't know. I, I really felt that she was a too passive a character to be involved with so active a character like Harry. But I've also read that if Harry and Hermione got together, it would have been a big problem because both of them are extremely, extremely amazing. So I guess Hermione and Ron is still okay, but Harry and Ginny, I can't just accept it. Also, like, Snape knows everything about Harry, but some, uh, you know, we should have, like, understood here that Snape really cared about Harry. Otherwise, after that Septum Septra incident, he would probably have sort of done worse things to him than he did. It's almost midnight. I'm just done with reading Half-Blood Prince. And, you know, Snape is the most under, most misunderstood character in the history of all books of literature, I guess. Are there any more characters who are so misunderstood? I'm not sure. Please let me know in the comments below. But I feel so terrible. Everybody thinks he's evil. Everybody thinks he's 
the worst right now and the thing is that part where snape reveals his life story which which comes in the seventh book it's one of my favorite parts it's one of the parts that i read regularly so i know what it is and god i think the hero of the harry potter series is not harry it's snape it's all about the the endless love of this man for a woman so many years after his death and his mixed feelings feelings towards harry are very very mixed also guys do you remember the very first line about what do you get when you add ash wood and uh, ash something with worm something i forgot what the line exactly was but today i also read an article which gave a very very deep explanation for that one line which was the first line that snape ever uttered and i had never never ever known that it has so much meaning and yeah i guess jk rowling has got a bit problematic over time but she was really good. she she wrote this amazing book and you just can't deny that i think i am going to start the last book after i have my dinner so it's the morning of the eighth day um so seven days are over and i finished like six books in seven days but i think since i am on the go right now i'll finish this one as well i am at the part where they find out about the deathly hallows one of my favorite stories ever but my absolute favorite of this book is definitely where you get to find out everything about snape so the thing is um, about the deathly hallows there are some fan theories that maybe dumbledore himself was dead i will link them in the description below because it's really interesting and you should read it but yeah without any further ado i should get back to reading because i want to finish reading deathly hallows by the end of the day hi it's the ninth day not the eighth because honestly i couldn't finish reading yesterday um my days have been getting very hectic because uh, i had thought that for 7 days i'll read straight so i delayed a lot of work so the past 2 days have been very hectic so it took me almost 2 and a half days to read this one book i guess but i just finished reading the book on storytel and i loved it i wouldn't say that i didn't like it but towards the end of this readathon i did feel that since i was rushing to just I, i was constantly thinking when will i get to finish this book so i more than the joy of actually reading the story i was happy that i am done with reading the seven books of harry potter so i didn't really want to feel this way but i do and i think i think that's fine we don't really have control over emotions so i want to be very honest with you reading seven books of harry potter in about 9 days has been great for me but I think that to enjoy the series wholly I would probably prefer taking a little bit more of time. I did enjoy the first few days of the readathon immensely though but I could feel my energy draining as the end approached. You can literally see the darker dark circles under my eyes. It's not like I don't have them but then I can to you can totally understand it's deeper than ever. So yeah this has been one hell of an experience and I'm so happy that a lot of you joined me in this venture a lot of you have been tagging me on Instagram and Facebook and I love it and please do let me know if you like to have one more readathon anytime soon I would love to host one but definitely we are not going to read seven books in seven days next time uh we are probably going to read seven books in one <laughs> just kidding but overall after reading the Harry Potter series I did feel that I enjoyed this of uh, the first two books the best and the sixth book as well uh, comparatively the other books were not that interesting but yeah all of them are interesting in their own way my least favorite book has to be the fifth one but uh, I totally leave that upon you which is your best and worst book of the whole series I hope you guys liked watching this vlog obviously this was not a very cinematic vlog i just wanted to shoot the moments of my life when i was finished finishing certain parts of the book as you guys know this readathon was sponsored by storytel so huge shout out and thanks to them if you want to read audio books for free for 30 days and actually it's a database of 1 lakh plus audio books so if you want to read so many audio books in not so little time you should definitely check out storytel my free trial code link storytel.com/ali is here and it will be in the description below just click and you can enroll for 30 days free you can cancel any time the best part is that the subscription is just 2.99 per month which means you're going to save a lot on buying books and that really helps 
Yeah, so that would be it. I will be back with another video next week. Till then, bye-bye.